What do Superior Glockter, Anthony Hopkins and the wee lassie out of the butcher have in common? Watch on to find out. Anyway, it is Wednesday morning. Yesterday was a glorious day. Seems to be the whole country had sunshine, which means sales went <laughs> which is to be expected. You know, summer has finally arrived. Uh, people ain't buying books. They're out enjoying the sunshine, they're trying to get work done so they can get home, get out into the garden, go to the pub, do whatever they're going to do. But you know, brilliant day yesterday, weather-wise, terrible day sales-wise. But that's okay because it meant I got to go and sit outside for a couple of hours and read a book. But I'll tell you about that in a bit. First, let's look at some of the only eight sales and all quite modest sales in themselves. But a sale's a sale, money's money, not going to complain. Just going to keep listening, keep selling. There will be good days to come, even if there's been bad days in the past. First up, we have a bundle of four pre-bundled Aprilin Pike Fairy Tales. Um, so four book bundle. Picked these up oh, many, many weeks ago and just made them into a pre-bundle. One of those authors for you to see, oh, there's four, five, whatever books by the same author. So I'm just going to grab them and stick them together for a tenner and see what happens. And that's exactly what happened, 10 99 for the four of those. So that was a nice little start. Pop them down there because there's space today. And then some single stuff. You know, not really, I've only got one small bundle going out today. It's all just single bits and pieces. Uh, counting that pre-made bundle as a single piece as well. But the next single book is Leanne Moriarty, Apples Never Fall, uh, and that sold for £6.49, so £2.50 plus three ninety nine postage, obviously in excellent condition, but bought from a bundle listing. Who'd have thunk it? The next is not a book, but I picked it up as a book, and it is Sacred Mothers and Goddesses, so it's one of these card sets, you know, a bit like Riki and all of these things. Uh, let's see if I can just show you what they are. So it comes with the wee booklet just explaining what everything is. And then a set of cards with all your goddesses and such like on them. So, you know, it's one of these things you draw so many cards at random and then each card you know, represents your past, future, present type thing. Um, and was in the book section, sold at book prices, but has sold for £11.19. So I think I had it listed for like £8 plus postage, and it went on offer, 10% off offer, for £7.20. And I've only had it a week or so, so that's quite a nice one to get shifted fast. And then, another single book. So, I've said I've had a bit of luck with these recently, and that has continued. We Bible, £3 plus postage, so £6.99. Uh, and that is a first time buyer on eBay. So that's coming to you, Willow. Nice wee Bible. And then the only true bundle of the day, which is three Ian Rankin paperbacks for £9.69. So yeah, it really has been a, a slow, slow day. And only a couple more orders to show you. Uh, this one will take me on to my little topic for the day. So, the Road to box set, uh, Road to Singapore, Zanzibar, Morocco and Utopia. I've had this sitting for quite a wee while. Again, nice condition, nice and clean box sets when they're super cheap or possibly free, don't even remember. Um, I'll pick them up, sort through them and some of them have the potential to sell for a couple of quid. As this one did, £10 all in, so that's including postage, and going to yet another first time eBay buyer. So, thank you David. Movies. So that's movies, that's DVDs, that's not books. So what did I say? Glockta, Superior Glockta, Anthony Hopkins, and the wee lassie out of the Witcher. It's, it's what I've been doing the last few days. So, reading has plummeted the last month. I've hardly turned a page. I've just been doing lots of other bits and pieces. Very distracted. Uh, and not really, you know, sit down and get into a book. It always takes a few minutes and, you know, within a few minutes, a few pages, whatever I've tried to read, the mind's been off in other places. 
thinking about things, worrying about things, planning things, thinking about things that I need to get done. So I've not been doing much reading, but instead I've watched a bit of telly on Amazon Prime to start with, because you can do that and do other things at the same time. If it's not fully engaging you, you know, I can do a bit of listing, I can check things, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but what I watched was Those About to Die on Amazon Prime. So Anthony Hopkins was playing Vespasian. Vespasian Caesar, whatever he called himself back in the old days, and it's really about his, the Flavian dynasty. I uh, don't know if anyone else has watched it. What do you think of it? Me? I thought it was okay. It wasn't great. It was okay. Obviously, it's done on a budget. Uh, it seems to be pretty much a kind of a British production, considering all the actors that are in it. don't know who actually made it, but I, I quite enjoyed it. Historically, it's a bit shaky but it's a story man you don't watch it for historical accuracy if you want that you read a book or you watch a documentary by you know real uh, scholars but I quite enjoyed it it's got the wee guy out of Misfits in it who's always entertaining Misfits I forgot he was in Game of Thrones as well wasn't he Iron Ruin you know the dude uh, quite intriguing every single thing that happened you knew what was coming, what was what was going on. There weren't any twists, no, no surprises. It was very, very, very formulaic from that point of view, which is always a bit disappointing. These days, uh, you expect something to go, oh, wow, wasn't expecting that. And this just did not happen. Everything that came up, every shock, every death, every joyous moment, you just knew exactly what was coming. It was all signposted very, very clearly. So very formulaic, but mildly entertaining if you want something to stick on in the background and you like a bit of kind of sword and sandals then maybe it's for you but it filled a couple of my evenings and I'm sure quite sure I listed a few hundred books whilst I was watching it but mildly entertaining not a bad cast some good some not so great actors in it but entertaining nonetheless um, so that's Anthony Hopkins covered what about the wee lassie out of Planet of the Apes? I can't remember her name. It's something something. She's got a first name and a surname. Um, so Planet of the Apes, the new Planet of the Apes movie, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, just watched it the other night. And again, much like those about to die, it's all right. I haven't watched many movies lately at all. Uh, I keep starting them and then stopping them because they're just so uninspiring, formulaic, you know what's happening, but I actually watched this one all the way through. First bit, very bland, the way they had the apes acting, I know it's not real apes, I know it's CGI and all the rest of it, but the way that went, the, the way they spoke, even the way they moved didn't look as good as previous movies I don't think, um, but it was intriguing enough, there was enough going on in it that you kind of wondered what was going to come next, a wee bit of a disappointing ending but these films always are because you just don't seem to get many complete movies these days everything's got to be part of a series part of something so you never get that proper finale that proper closure which I think is a cop out because each of these any you know series of films they should be complete within themselves something that you can add to or revisit from a different point of view but they should be completing themselves and a lot of times it is a cop out because I've always found whether it's films, books, TV shows, whatever it is, the toughest bit to get right is the ending, is to actually make something complete and end it well. Um, so putting things into series with potentials for you know sequels and spin-offs and all the rest of it, it makes the endings a total cop out I think for a lot of directors, writers, producers they just don't do it anymore it's dead easy for them just to leave it wide open and not give you that proper conclusion satisfying or otherwise some things end brilliantly some things don't so Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes would I recommend it? aye if you're looking for some popcorn you've got a couple of hours to kill and you really have nothing better to do give it a watch see where it goes Um that leaves us with Superior Glockta, doesn't it? But before that, we have Star Wars The Force Awakens by Sean Williams. 
nice wee hardcover and it sold for £7.99 Superior Glockta so Joe Abercrombie um, before they were hanged something else Last Argument of Kings it's that trilogy The First Law brilliant brilliant books absolutely loving them um, like I say I've not been reading much at all lately I keep trying to get into things and it's not happening but the sun was out yesterday so I thought right, I'm going to take the third book in that trilogy sit in the garden and just read at least the first 50 pages just to get into it and uh, get going 200 pages later I came in and made the dinner so Superior Glockta one of the best literary characters out there and certainly in any kind of modern fiction uh, the humour in his books is just it is brilliant it's, it's dark it's nasty it makes you cackle rather than giggle if that makes any sense uh, and I don't know how many times I found myself sat out in the garden just kind of <laughs> uh, it's, it's, just, it's just brilliant although it's dark, violent, political not many nice characters they're all pretty damn nasty people uh, I still read it with a smile on my face absolutely brilliant absolutely loving it if you like any kind of fantasy fiction uh, help, forget that if you like to read you should try the First Law Trilogy first book's brilliant second book's really good this third book the first 200 pages is just phenomenal absolutely loving it so First Law Trilogy Joe Abercrombie of the TV, the movies, and the books in the last week or so, that is the one to get into. Absolutely loving it. And uh, so much so that I've got about three different copies of the series, even though I've not even finished reading it. You know, I've got hardcovers, special different hardcovers, the paperbacks, just just loving it. So getting to Joe Abercrombie, which, as that's the last book in a trilogy that I am reading, let's look at the last sale for the morning. Another single book from a variation bundle listing Colleen Hoover it ends with us really popular author just keeps selling and selling and selling and that went for £6.99 so nice clean copy good condition that's the important bit and that's today's sales so a quiet day sales wise yesterday I'm expecting it's going to be a pretty quiet day again today because the weather is forecast to be nice even though it's payday, I think people will be enjoying the weather and uh, the social things that that brings along with it, rather than worrying about going out and buying stuff online, in particular books. Nothing much more to say, other than, as ever, if if you've watched is this a whole 13 minutes of me chattering away, uh, you're mad or something, I don't know, but please hit a like, cost you nothing, makes a huge difference to these videos and getting them seen by a much wider audience. Subscribe, it does the same. Leave a comment, tell us what you think. Have you seen those who are about to die? What do you think? Is it, is it, is it really worth watching? Uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? You know, is it a good film? Do writers and directors, you know, cop out when it comes to ending things these days because it's just part of a wider universe, as they like to say. And Joe Abercrombie, we ran a wee poll, didn't we? We did, we ran a wee poll. How did that poll go? Um, you know, the who who's the current king or queen of fantasy? So, it's been up for a good few days. And at the moment, the contenders were Brandon Sanderson, Robin Hobb, George R. R. Martin, and Joe Abercrombie. So, the results. What are the results? Uh, kind of surprising and not surprising at the same time. George R. R. Martin won it by a mile with 46%, and it's hard to disagree with that. The Song of Ice and Fire has got to be one of the best book series ever written, fantasy or otherwise. It's just, it's phenomenal. It's so brilliantly written. Uh, that it warrants everything, all the acclaim that it gets. And I've read a little George R. R. Martin out with that, Fever Dream especially. Mm. 
I think that's probably my favourite vampire book ever. Uh, so yeah, clear winner, George R. R. Martin. But the other three, Joe Abercrombie, Robin Hobb, Brandon Sanderson, where would they sit in that? And I know there's dozens, hundreds of more fantasy writers out there that would probably have been more popular than these, but it only gives me the option to put four up. So I just tried to get a kind of modernish selection. Um, so in second place, which kind of surprised me, was Robin Hobb uh, with 22% of the vote. So Robin Hobb, I've, I've dipped into a couple of Robin Hobb books. It's not, not in my taste. It's much more that kind of high fantasy story. It's very slowly paced, so it's not... It, my brain doesn't focus very well on many things. It didn't grab me in Syria. I'm just going to sit and read through this book. Really well written, but not particularly my thing. But she got 22% of the vote, so fantastic. We've got a lady up there instead of it being all the boys. Uh, but Robin Hobb came second with 22%. Where, which is where I thought Brandon Sanderson would have been. Um, I've not read any Brandon Sanderson yet. There's a few in the list that I want to try because I always hear great things about it. But again, it sounds a bit more kind of epic, high fantasy than what I particularly like. I didn't enjoy Lord of the Rings. I haven't really tried <coughs> excuse me, much out with that, but quite surprised that... Brandon Sanderson wasn't second because there's so much hype out there that I thought he would have come second. He didn't. He came third with 17%, which leaves Joe, who until George gets another book out there, is currently definitely my favourite fantasy author at the moment, came fourth with only 15%. That's, that's terrible. Come on, Joe Abercrombie. Everybody, get out there and read a bit of Joe. Um, George was always going to win because it's much more known. Everybody in you know the Western world has heard of George Martin one way or another. They've heard of Game of Thrones. They know even if they've never seen it, read the books or whatever. There's a knowledge out there. It exists. You know, you get board games about it. You get all sorts. You don't get any of that with any of the others. The television series, obviously, you know, really really heightens the awareness there. Um, of the others. What, what can I say? Brandon Sanderson seems to have a huge, I was about to say cult following, but it's not cult following at all. It's a very popular following. Um, really, really devoted fans. He churns the books out. He's got a phenomenal output. Um, and some of his books get amazing reviews, really, really highly rated. So I would have expected him to have been much more popular. But this is obviously you, the audience, that are you know voting on these things. So he didn't quite get there. Uh, and Joe Abercrombie, 50%, not bad, considering half the vote goes to George Martin, then, which is expected, then you get just under a third of what was left over, a quarter of what was left, really. Um, so I'm not disappointed for Joe, but Joe Abercrombie, go out there, read them of the four, for those that have books that are out and that are coming out soon he's the one I would pick out of that lot anyway that was that little poll so we did have another one which was on Stephen King which again is a surprising result but I'm going to come back to it another day when I've got some Stephen King books or something going out and then I shall talk about it then but for now as ever thank you so much for your support and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow <laughs>